Okay, you should be able to see how high this grass is here. Pretty much up to my waist. So it's about uh, three foot of grass around here and this basically is to show you uh, that I know what I'm doing when it comes to putting in plots and stuff. So this particular client, we're gonna mow this, brush hog this today come back in a few days and spray glyphosate, get rid of the weeds. Um, it's June 22nd, so a few weeks from that, maybe a month or so, we're gonna probably spray again, don't know, but we're gonna put soil amendments down until, check out the weed, maybe spray some weed right before we plant clover chicory mix in this field. And um, you can see that we'll have a lot to contend with, uh, but if this is done right, these weeds shouldn't matter too much. So we're getting started now, looking to plan in about a month, month and a half. One concern might be when uh, mowing grass this high is that I don't want to hit any fawns. But fawns, by now, it's been a good month or so probably since they've been dropped. Shouldn't, if they're laying in here, should be able to run away pretty easily from me. And today is July 2nd, back here. I mowed this property last week, about a week ago. Today I'm gonna to come in and spray glyphosate on this and put half the fertilizer down. It's calling for potash. That was my personal preference to do it that way. And just gonna get it down now and I'll get the rest down when I come back here in a few weeks to start tilling. Client done, for today anyway, sprayed 45 gallons mixture of glyphosate, glyphosate, I keep saying that wrong, and then I put uh, seven bags of 0060 potash down. It needs uh, six more at least, and I'll do that right before I till. I just wanted to get this down, it was my choice to do it this way, and uh, see you in a few weeks. All right, back here at a client's property, I sprayed. You can see it worked great. I was, it's been about, oh, three weeks now. Uh, got a little behind here, but today I'm gonna start tilling so we can get this clover chicory mix in. I think the client's gonna be here a little bit later and we are going to discuss maybe some other options, put some oats in with it, or maybe some onless wheat. Uh, but since it's an annual and it'll help get that clover going, Ladino takes a little bit to get established like a year to get fully established so uh, get something to eat this year and uh, next year when you cut that uh, oats or wheat off then uh, you're left with that nice green lush clover. Just wanted to give you a quick look of what it looks like after just one tilling. There's a lot of vegetation in some areas. It's also very hard dirt. Um, not that dry. There's not a lot of dust kicking up but a lot of rocks in certain areas too so Definitely gonna have to go over it at least one more time. I'm thinking two more times just to get that good seed bed. It's a big key when planting any type of seed is a good seed bed and getting seed to soil contact. Reason for tilling this ground versus no tilling this clover in is for one of the reasons the clover seed is so small, I don't exactly know if it is even great to no-till, I, I haven't had a lot of experience no-tilling clover. Uh, now if I was no-tilling something like oats or wheat, corn, soybeans, I definitely would not be tilling this, I'd just plant it. I'm risking activating some other weeds by tilling it. So that is a risk I'm willing to take. We know that going in. We know that I may have to come back in and spring see, overseed this, which will help. But in my experiences, the other plots that I have done haven't had too many problems with weeds. Killing it like this especially. Ideally, I would probably plant something in it this year, oats, wheats, and then a year from now come back in and plant the clover just to kind of be safe for weeds and, and other things. But you know what? Uh, when you're in a world like we are 
of getting results fast and not having a lot of uh, quote unquote time. You know, you just do it, try to do it the best you can with what you have and spraying and mowing and staying on top of it is uh, the biggest concern at this point. And that's, you know, not too bad to handle. I got this plot ready for the clover and chicory mix. I am going to put this forage whitetail oats on it. If you like buck forage oats, you're gonna like these. Very comparable, if not better. If you dislike buck forage oats prices, you're really gonna like these oats. These are about $35 a 50 pound bag for one acre. I'm doing about 1.8 acres, two acres, somewhere in there. The client recommended putting this on light and I'm gonna whirlwind over the shoulder my clover chicory mix and I'm gonna put two full acres on it and then call to pack it in. Now seed wise, I'm seeding the oats first because it is a bigger seed than the clover chicory mix. So that's why I'm gonna use the grain drill to put the oats in first. Then I'm gonna go over it with the whirlwind, the clover chicory mix. I'm going to put the rest of my fertilizer down, my potash, that I put half down before I tilled, tilled that in, the other half down now, and call to pack it all in. This will be ready to go. We got a rain coming in, hopefully tonight. If not tomorrow, 60% chance tomorrow. Cross my fingers, that would really set this clover and chicory off real nice. It's been a good time after I've sprayed the glyphosate, the weed killer, so that shouldn't be a problem. Gonna be a great looking plot. So this is the clover plot that's done. Um, used 50 pound bag of oats. I used two 10 pound bags of clover chicory. And here's the results. This is the dirt. Hopefully rain tomorrow. Next time I come back, next time I come back we should see a green carpet. And we're gonna put a utilization cage down today. Had to bring the whole fan with me uh, to experience this, but these cages really tell you if your food plot is a success or not. It also tells you how many deer are in your food plot, whether they're eating a lot of it or not eating very much of it. And uh, this just kind of cages off a little spot and um, tells us just that. So I usually, this is a three foot high fence. I usually get a um, four foot high fence, but three foot's fine for this. And I'll cut about eight feet off of it. And then we got our post here. And we'll go down, we'll put the post in, we'll put the cage in, and then we are done. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. This is a perennial clover, ladino clover mostly. You'll see uh, how I've been planting it. And this, this clover takes two years to get established. That is why I put the oats in with it. Gives the deer something to eat this year while this clover comes up real nice. And a year from now it'll be thicker, but uh, that doesn't mean we don't have to maybe uh, frost seed or overseed at some point, but we'll just have to see what it looks like at that point. Yellow though. Yeah, it does look like rotten banana. Daddy, look it. I can bring that down. Oh, it's a little bit of a banana. Okay, let's go.